Hey folks, it's Patriot Nurse. In today's segment, I want to discuss with you a few things related to the flu. We're hitting flu season right now, so join me for another barn talk. Yep, I'm in the barn and we're going to talk about flu and health. So the first thing you may have noticed, if you paid attention to current events, is that in certain states, namely Colorado and in Georgia, probably Metro Atlanta, they're seeing a pretty significant increase in the number of flu cases that are reported. And so I want to ask the question with you, why do people get sick? with flu specifically. And so of course the answer that you're taught in nursing school and in and, and whatever medical school it is, that's a typical Western medical school, is that we get sick with the flu because we're exposed to the flu virus and that's where it ends. But that line of logic is the same thing as saying babies come from women. Uh, yes, that is true. Babies do come from women, but there is another factor in the presence of that baby. And so I wanna ask that question with you. Is that just the simple truth of, okay, there's an exposure of the flu virus to someone and then they get sick? The answer to that is no. There are other things going on. And the reason why I'm going over this with you today is because my hope is that once you listen to this and you process this and kind of do the checkup from the neck up in your own life, you'll be able to spot other risk factors that increase your and your family's likelihood for getting flu. So let's go over that. What are these other factors that are present in a person's body, in a person's life, that make it more likely that they're going to contract the flu with exposure to the flu virus? Put it this way, we are exposed to a ton of bacteria and viruses every day of our lives. If you have ever flown in an airplane, you have been exposed to a myriad of both bacteria and viruses. But we don't always get sick whenever we fly on an airplane, most of us, I hope, um, or if we you know, are in, for instance, like a church meeting or something where there's a lot of people. There are other factors there. So what are those factors? The first one is the presence of toxicity in our bodies, okay? And when I'm talking about toxicity, I'm not talking about some sort of magical thinking. I'm talking about clear weakness in the body system. And this can come in a myriad of forms. The first and most obvious is a person's chronic constipation. When a person is not regularly evacuating their bowels, the body is trying to send its waste products out through the normal mechanism, but it's not able to effectively empty the garbage. And when you have garbage piling up and piling up and piling up in a person's body over time, it gets loaded down with toxicity to the point where it can't go through its normal functions. So we do know that you know, chronic constipation is an annoyance for sure. I mean, older people who are non-ambulatory, we as nurses go, whoa, whoa, we need to get them moving. We need to get them hydrated. We need to, you know, just start the bowel process going, but we're not looking at those underlying factors and the underlying factors that create chronic constipation, which makes us more likely to get sick, not just with the flu, but with every host of, of malevolent nasty is our diet and our lifestyle. The two main portions here of this diet and lifestyle can be further broken down into, into subsequent categories. The diet, so many of us through convenience or through just sheer finances, only take in a limited amount of fresh fruits and vegetables. And we eat a diet that is very high in processed foods, processed grain, additive rich stuff. You know, if you, if you don't know what that chemical is that you're reading on an ingredients level, and I hope that you're reading your ingredients labels, um, there's a, a decent chance that it may not be something that God created and, or that exists in nature. And the way I'm thinking about it is if it doesn't come from the ground or if it's not a first degree relative of something that I immediately know, like for instance, glycerin, um, if it's not something that I know for sure of as a natural product, I'm not going to put it in my body, nor am I going to put it on my skin, by the way. Over time, when we eat these nasty things, these refined foods, etc., it builds up toxicity in our bowels for sure. Um, and that creates issues with the body's ability to take out the garbage. If the body cannot take out the garbage, it cannot protect and defend you against disease. So keep your bowels clean. Keep your bowels clean. I made a video, by the way, about the power of your poo while your turds matter, which apparently everybody thought was like, really crazy. But to me, I'm just all about health promotion, you know, like I want my patients and my people to be well taken care of. So I'll put a link up here in the, in the little box and the little card thing, card thing, so that you can see this video. It's important to poop well, and that will help keep you healthy and your body able to defend against things like the flu. The second thing is lifestyle. Okay. So with lifestyle, I am talking about the entire way that we live. And I could make Wow, like so many videos about that. But the first is lack of mobility. The new little catchphrase in health world is sitting is the new smoking. Sedentary lifestyle, limited hip range of motion, 
um, not being physically moving and physically uh, contracting, you know, those muscles, that puts a person at a whole increased risk of a host for an entire, you know, myriad of, of issues, whether it's chronic constipation because you're sitting and your colon's getting kinked up, or for instance, you're dealing with, um, you know, more and more issues that show up as a result of lack of lymphatic drainage. You think about this, okay, the lymph system, the garbage collection system in your body, that only works when your muscles contract with it. And I could do an entire you know, lecture on the series of you know, the different body systems. But the bottom line here is that your garbage collection, your garbage men in your body, your lymphatic system, it only gets stimulated and it only works when your muscles contract. And your muscles only contract, your skeletal muscles specifically, when you move, when you do your little boogie and thing, okay? And because of the changes that we've seen, not only with more specified technological um, sector jobs, or just people sitting more, people who have other physical issues that make it difficult for them to be mobile, it puts them at an increased risk to have a deficit in lymphatic drainage, which sets them up for failure when they're exposed to things like the flu, okay? Or other malevolent bacteria, whatever the case may be. You have a lot of good bacteria on you, especially in your skin and also in your small intestine and your colon. We are a little walking ecosystem of bacteria, good bacteria that are our little protectors. There are little infantry men on the front lines that keep us safe and healthy from bad bacteria and bad viruses, okay? Um, and so when I'm talking about these lifestyle things, cut down on your antimicrobial soap. Like if it's got triclosan, which thank God they're shifting out because it's a nasty environmental toxin that sets you up to like be, it's sterile. Um, you know, I want to decrease my overall exposure to this antimicrobial, this and this constant exposure of these hand sanitizers and stuff. Listen, folks, um, the more we find out about this, the more that it seems to be that that's not such a good move. If you want to wash your hands, wash your hands with soap, just regular soap, like ivory soap or like Dr. Bronner's soap. By the way, Dr. Bronner's is very entertaining to read in the shower. It's like all this weird theology and space stuff but they make a great soap, right? So you can entertain yourself and have a good soap at the same time. Um, like keeping yourself washed in a good soap, that's gonna be helpful for you as opposed to killing everything. And speaking of killing everything, the overusage of antibiotics is huge, okay? This is another lifestyle thing. We don't need to be taking our kids to the doctor every five minutes if they have a cough, a cold, or a sniffle, all right? Support their body, take care of them. Uh, there's lots of places that you can learn how to support the health of your family. That is why I teach the classes that I do each year. Um, because I want to set people up to be able to take care of their family. So basically, the diet and lifestyle are huge in whether or not somebody gets the flu. It's not just the exposure of that person to the, the virus, okay? There's a lot more to it than that. And, oh, by the way, I don't do flu shots, okay? <laughs> I don't do flu shots at all. Um, and apparently, half of the, the country is on the same vein as me and that they, A, know that they don't work. No, they don't work, all right? Especially with the past couple of years, the whole guessing game that the drug companies do in order to try and figure out, you know, which virus strain is it going to be this year? Yeah, they suck at it. Okay. Like I would not be going in with them on betting. I would not go to the horse races with the pharmaceutical companies because they can't get stuff right. All right. Um, furthermore, there's lots of stuff in there that's, that's not good for you, like adjuvants and, um, and depending on which manufacturer it is, um, cell lines that have been isolated from aborted fetal tissue. Yeah, that's also part of it. So no, I don't do the flu shots. I am much more of support the body, support the body's work, and then take care of it and it'll do its thing for you, all right? If you are gonna build a house to last, you're not gonna build it out of cheap particle wood from China. You're going to use good quality materials in order to support that house is being able to withstand whatever environmental conditions come its way. It's the same thing with your body. Eat quality food. Take out the things in your life that don't need to be there. Excessive drinking, excessive smoking, excessive stress, toxic relationships, all these things we know shouldn't be there. That's gonna help you. And if you do end up getting the flu, I have a couple of things I wanna show you. The first, cough, cold, flu, or whatever the case may be. My first little pal of the system is the old Indian wild cherry bark. Hopefully you guys can see that. I'll put a link to this in the description box below. This stuff is awesome. And if you end up having a persistent cough that just won't go away. Um, that's something that I really like. There's also another one that I'm a big fan of, which is the Dr. Christopher's Herbal Cough Syrup. Hopefully my camera will recognize it. 
Okay, hold still. There we go. Yeah, that's what I recommend for sure. I have these in my little herbal kit all the time. Put a link in the description box below. And if you have a person in your family that doesn't have the strongest set of lungs and maybe has a little bit of tendency towards weakness, this is another good thing that I recommend. The Dr. Christopher's Lung and Bronchial Formula. It just kind of helps support your body's natural, um, how should I say, maintenance mechanisms with your lungs and with your uh, upper respiratory tract for sure. I've got links to these in the description box below. Guys, there's so much that we can do to support the health of our families, to take care of ourselves. And there's a lot that we can do as far as care for sick people at home that doesn't require you going to a doctor or going to, God forbid, the emergency room. There's a lot that we can do to support our families and keep them healthy and take care of them at home. If you like the video and the information, please subscribe to me. Also, if you'd like to learn more, if you wanna go in depth about how to take care of your family in good times and in bad, come out and take a class with me. I got my schedule up at the website, www.thepatriotnurse.com. You can check it out there, folks. I hope that it was helpful for you today. Guys, be healthy, take care of your families, and include all the things that I talked about in this video in your life to help you better be able to withstand the flu. Have a wonderful weekend, guys. For now, it's Patriot Nurse signing off. I'll see y'all later. Bye.